Okay. The next item we'll be covering is how to modify and delete individual asset records from FRPP MS. To do this, an agency or bureau right user or an agency administrator would select the asset search tab. They would then search for the asset they would like to update. After finding the asset they would like to update on the generated report page, they would select that FRPP asset ID, which would bring them to the individual record page. This is the same page as seen in the data submission process for XML files. The difference is this is for a record that is currently in your agency's inventory instead of for a staged record which you are hoping to add or modify in your agency's inventory. At this point, a write user or an admin would see the edit back and delete buttons. By selecting the delete button, that record is removed for the current fiscal year. By selecting the back button, you would return to the previous reports page. And by selecting the edit button, you would open up that records edit page. This is similar to the add new asset page. At this point you would go through and make any updates you want to that individual record. Required fields are again indicated by the red bars. As you make updates, some of those bars will change and you will be required to enter new information according to the business rules for the current fiscal year. Once you're done making updates, you would select Save. Alternatively, you would select Cancel to return to the previous page with no updates made, or you would select Reset to update the fields and return them to their previous state if you feel you have gone too far in making updates. Now very briefly, I'm going to demo that in the application. While I pull this up, are there any questions? Okay, now as an agency or bureau right user or an agency administrator, I would have access to the asset search tab located up here. I would select this tab to pull up the search page and I would search my agency for records. The report will process And after it is done processing, I would scroll down and find the record I would like to update. I would select that record's FRPP asset ID. That will bring me to that assets page. Here I will have the options to edit, delete it, or go back to the previous page. In this case, I don't want to delete the record, I want to edit it. So I select edit and I would pull up that Assets Modify page. As you can see, I have all of the fields available to me, and I can choose to update one. Here I choose to change Status to Disposed, and several other fields become available to me, and I can choose to update it. But I have realized I no longer want to make updates to this record, so I select Cancel and then return to the previous page. Are there any questions on how I would modify or delete an asset? Yes, if, you, if you're modifying asset, then does it apply all the business rules that are required? Like if all of a sudden you put disposed, would it require you to go back in and enter disposed date or other information? Yes, so if you modify an asset similar to adding an asset, it will force you to update that asset per the business rules for the current fiscal year. Does that answer your question? Yes. Okay. Moving back to the presentation, we are going to cover how to do a more in-depth asset search and produce and export a summary report 
from FRPP MF to do an in-depth search in FRPP MF I would return to the asset search page from the asset search page I would select the filters to filter out information I do not want to appear in my report then I would select a report type from the top there are a total of seven report types. This is one up from previously. The new report is the asset detailed report codes. This is the same as your asset detailed report. This report displays all of the information in the asset detailed report, but instead of displaying interior for my agency, it would display the code for my agency. In this case, the number 14. And it is the same for all fields which have codes associated with them. After I've finished choosing all of the information I want to have in my report, I would select search from either the top or the bottom of the page to generate the report and cancel to cancel generating the report. At this point, I am going to now demo how to generate one of these reports in the application. Returning to the asset search page, I would choose to select interior as my reporting agency when generating the report. I want to have a real property unique identifier of INT underscore. And I want to generate an asset detailed codes report. And at this point, I select search. And the report generates. It contains all of the filters I just mentioned and displays several assets. These assets all have the real property unique identifier INT underscore appended to them. Turning to the presentation, I can then choose to export one of these reports and save a local copy on my hard drive. To do this, I would either select printable view or export details from the report page. At this point, if I select printable view, I am automatically given the option to save a .xls file locally. If I select export details, I am asked what file format I would like, and then I select export. At this point, I am given a chance to save that file locally. So if I return, to the application and the report I have just generated, I can scroll to the top. At the top, you will see the printable view button and the export detail button. If I select printable view, you will see that I have now downloaded an XLS file for this report. If I open that file up, If I open that file up, you will see the name of the report type at the top, the user who's generated the report, and when it was generated. Below that, you will see all of the filters in the report. And below the filters, you will see the various columns in the report and the assets in the report. That is how you would generate a report and save it locally to your desktop for FRPP MS. Are there any questions on this before I continue? Okay. In our next portion of the presentation, we will be covering the administrative functions in FRPP MS. These are the functions which will be available to an agency administrator in the application. For user ease, we've compiled the user search, inventory clearance, and data anomaly reports functions onto a single tab 
with subtabs. This tab is labeled administration. The user search function will allow an agency administrator to search for users in the agency or agencies they are associated with. This search can be performed by login name, first name, last name, whether the user is active or the user's access level. The inventory clearance page allows an agency administrator to clear the inventory for their agency or up to five bureaus at a time in their agency for the current fiscal year. The inventory clearance process will run in the background and will send an email to the requester upon completion. Below the clear inventory selection area, you will see a log of the inventory clearances for the selected agency. This log will say the agency, which has been cleared, the bureau, or there is a bureau which has had its inventory cleared, the clearance date, and then who cleared that agency's inventory. It will also tell you whether or not the clearance for that agency's inventory has been completed or not. What you will not see here is the records that were cleared. Once you have cleared the inventory for an agency or bureau, that inventory is gone for the current fiscal year. The last sub-tab available to agency administrators in the Administration tab is the Data Anomaly Reports tab. This allows agency administrators to generate 19 different data anomaly reports. You have your 14 immediate reports at the top. These reports will run immediately on selection and can be generated for up to five agencies or the entire system. Agency selection here is set by default but can be adjusted to multiple agencies as necessary. You also have five on-queue reports. These reports are queued to run on selection. The user will receive an email once the report is generated and agency selection is required here. You can only generate a report for a single agency at a time for an on-queue report. To generate one of these data anomaly reports, you would, for an immediate report, select the agency from the pick list at the top. Afterwards, you would just select the report from the immediate reports list at the bottom. To generate an on-queue report, you would select the agency from the drop-down at the bottom of the page, and then you would select the report you would like to generate from the drop-down beside that. After selecting the agency and report, you select Generate Report, and the report will generate, and when it is complete, it will be available to you in the View Generated Report section. Now, I will demo this for you in the application. While I pull the application up, are there any questions? So, as an agency administrator, I have access to the Administration tab. If I select the Administration tab, you will see that I now have access to three different sub-tabs. The first is my User Search tab, the next is my Inventory Clearance tab, and the last is my Data Anomaly tab. If I want to search for a user in my agency's inventory, or in my agency, I would select the agency, I would select either the login name if I know it, the first name, the last name, whether they're active, and I can select their access level. In this case, I want to know what active users in my agency have admin privileges. After selecting those filters, I select search. At this point, you will see the agency admin for my agency. If I want to clear my search, I select the Clear button, and the search is cleared, and I can start over. For Inventory Clearance, I would select the Inventory Clearance tab. At this point, I would select the agency I wish to clear the inventory for, 
And then I would select the bureaus if I want to select more than one that I want to clear my inventory for. If there's more than one bureau I want to clear, I would use the control button to select it. Once I've chosen everything I would like to clear inventory for, I would select clear inventory. In this case, I don't want to upset the database by clearing inventory, so I'm not going to do that. But, as I mentioned previously, you can see below the log of when the inventory was cleared for this agency. You have last the interior agency was cleared specifically for the Bureau of Mineral Management Service. This occurred last month and was done by this account. And the status for that is completed. Of course, what I do not see is specifically what records were cleared for that bureau. The last tab available to an agency administrator is the Data Anomaly Reports tab. By selecting the Data Anomaly Reports tab, I am given the option to generate a Data Anomaly Report. First, I would select the agency from my pick list to generate an immediate report. As I am an interior agency admin, I only have access to the interior agency. Next, I would select the report I want to generate. After selecting a report, I wait a couple minutes and the report will generate. In this case, I have generated a lease cost per square foot for offices report. All of the information for this report is displayed below and similarly to an asset search report, I can choose to export the report and save a copy locally using printable view or export details. However, Let's say I do not want to generate an immediate report and I want to generate one of our five on queue reports. In this case, I would return to the Data Anomaly tab. I would scroll to the bottom and find the on queue report section. Here, I would select my agency. Again, it's interior. And I would select the report I want to generate. After this, I select Generate Report. At this point, that report is queued, and it will take a few minutes for that report to generate. Given the time it will take, I'm not going to wait for that report in this demo, but should you choose to view it, you would select the icon next to Reports once it is complete. Now before I continue with the presentation, are there any questions on the Administrations tab? Okay, now we will begin the wrap up for this presentation. Uh, first thing, if you need to contact us because you are having technical issues with the application or you cannot log in using the forgot password function, please reach out to us at frpp at vencore.com or call the phone number listed. Uh, if you do reach out to us, include your contact information, your name, and the steps you followed before reaching the problem. If you're emailing us, screenshots would be helpful. Just so you are aware, we do keep a log of all the tickets generated throughout the course of the application's lifecycle. For our known challenges going forward and things we are working on, the reports filter will be displayed in both the reports and the printable view using the printable view to view the exact format of the report. The format in Excel is different from the printable view format. For status codes, you will see the displayed status code instead of the actual value for a selected item since the system cannot currently display both disposed and cannot currently be disposed when searching for disposed assets. Therefore, we have to use the status codes. Predominant use summary reports for systems and agency admin with access to multiple agencies with the exception of state and DOD will display this report grouped by agency even if only one agency is selected on the data submission screen. And then our reports, once they've been exported, are labeled for confidential use only in the footer instead of for official use only. This will be updated in the future. And our new asset and missing asset report will always display the latest report generated. 
So are there any questions on our known challenges and changes? Okay. So the last thing we want to cover today is our secure socket layer migration. FRPPMS, per IT standards, will be moving to and implementing secure socket layer using the SHA 256 hash algorithm. We ask that you test the compatibility of your user environment for SHA 256 by visiting the linked web page in the charts. If you do not see the green box displayed below saying that you've passed the compatibility test, we ask that you please notify us that your environment is not compatible with the algorithm at <laughs> frp.bencore.com. Are there any questions on this? All right. Well, I would like to thank everyone for attending our presentation today. If you have any other questions related to the application, and please let us know. Uh, thanks, Colin. Um, do you want to pass on some other uh, information? Um, as a result of the uh, recent news about uh, OPM's IT systems, security has taken on a uh, tightened and tightened um, role. Um, we are in the process of considering alternatives to comply with new standards or at least enforcement of existing standards relating to FRPP accounts. Um, the biggest impact will be felt by agency administrators. I don't know if we have any on the line participating in the training session, um, but there may be some new requirements um, for you. But because we are still contemplating different uh, ways to incorporate that within the uh, FRPP MS, we don't have anything to show you now, um, but we are planning on conducting a set of training focused solely for FRPP agency administrators to go over um, how these new IT security standards are being implemented in the system and what that means for you as an FRPP agency administrator. Uh, most of the standards and requirements uh, focus on provisioning of accounts um, or potentially uh, renewing existing accounts. So um, be on the lookout um, once we arrive at an um, alternative to implement. Um, we'll obviously go through the development and incorporation of that within the system and then sometime um, later this summer, early fall, we'll conduct a uh, series of uh, training sessions for agency administrators to show you what your new uh, roles and responsibilities include. Um, we have also recorded the sessions. Uh, we are for both the data dictionary phase one and we'll be doing a recording of phase two. Uh, once we have those recordings completed, transcribed um, through the YouTube links, we will share those with you. Um, hopefully by tomorrow, I'll share with you the links for the data dictionary and phase one training. Um, just have to put out the note um, and then uh, distribute it to those universe of users. Um, the way the recording uh, software works, we were advised to break it up anywhere between a half an hour and an hour segment. So you will see multiple links for the data dictionary training and multiple links for the uh, phase one um, FRPP MS training. Um, so, and we'll number it so you know which is the first and the second or the third. Um, so you can follow along. But you can use those as reference points 
um, even after participating in the, the training session, if there's something you wanted to check, um, you can go back and reference those. And, and it's interactive. It will show you the, the screen as well as um, the audio recording of whoever was conducting the training. So, um, any other general questions before we conclude the uh, session today? Dan LeMay at the Park Service, not general, more specific. Go ahead, Dan. Thanks, Chris. Um, it's about the user access levels, and maybe I misunderstand them, but my sense is, is that if you have certain types of editing capabilities, like if you load files, you can't go in and edit individual records. Am I correct, or am I misunderstanding? So I believe you're referring to the FRPP user role. So for our FRPP user role, they do control access to different functions in the application. A write user can only edit records that are already in their agency's inventory. A data submission user can only edit records that have been staged. So as a data submission user, if I choose to stage an XML file, which is part of my functionality, that file is then validated. At that point, if there are any errors, I can go into that file specifically and update it so that there are no errors and it has been corrected according to the current business rule. At that point, my agency admin has the opportunity to upload the valid file, updating the database for my agency's inventory for the current fiscal year. On the other hand, the write user can automatically write to that agency's inventory for the current fiscal year, but they can only do it for single records at a time. Does that clarify things for you? I believe I understand that, and that's going to be a real challenge for me. I'm involved in doing both in the current system. You know, I, I, I'm involved in, in uploading the the XMLs, and then I also go in and edit individual records. So Do you have describing? I'm not going to have both abilities. If you're an agency administrator, you will have both abilities. Not. I'm a bureau user. He, he, he works no. in the bureau. Okay. Uh, we will have to work with you on that. Okay. Should I send in a help desk help ticket request? Yeah. Uh, please. Um, okay. And Dan, is there somebody else? You could assume one of those were, I'm just asking if there's somebody else that, and I don't know where you're spending most of your time, but if you're spending most of your time doing the staging, validating, and correction before upload, you know, keeping you as a data submission user, is there someone who can do the editing after Willie would upload that XML file? Possible. It's just that okay. I'm really the I'm really the pivot point for our bureau. That it would be best if I had the ability to do both. Okay. Then I'm just asking. We can talk about it some more. Sure. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Please uh, shoot us an email, and we will work with you offline. Okay. Thanks. Are there any other questions? All right. Well, thank you, everybody. You all have a good day. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Goodbye. Thank you.